Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you for your coming. I would like to give a talk in the next 10 minutes about the rattan industry in Indonesia. It's about rattan research that C4 has been conducted in the last, maybe we started in 97, as I remember, and uh, I joined C4 in 99. So uh, rattan actually one of the research that I was participated in uh, the first time I joined C4. So uh, the research that I would like to present actually uh, the dynamics of the rattan itself uh, from the raw material productions into the industries between 1997 into uh, 2011. So we recently published occasional paper number 101, the title just mentioned by Christine, uh, Rata, the ones of the mo one of the most important uh, non-timber forest product in Indonesia. So uh, back in 99, uh, C4 conducted research in uh, Kutai district, uh, now known as the West Kutai district. So we even started before the reform, before the decentralization. The politics at that time was quite completely different. And then the research was conducted between 97 to 2005. And uh, we conducted various studies, uh, livelihood studies, uh, biophysical studies, uh, marketing, uh, marketing chain studies, as well as uh, some of the uh, policies uh, studies. And uh, the research was hosted by C4 C4 at that time has the projects uh, has a program called uh, NTFP projects. So before we had program, we had the projects called NTFP projects, and now uh, has been transformed into the forest and livelihood portfolios. So uh, rattan in Indonesia actually divided into two streams. Uh, one actually the cultivated rattan, and the second one is the wild rattan. The cultivated rattan mainly grows in Kalimantan, uh, especially East Kalimantan and Central Kalimantan. And uh, they are mainly dominated by the small species, the small diameter species, uh, Calamus caesius as Calamus treculus, uh, or also known as uh, Taman Sega Irid or TSI, that's the trade name, uh, well known in the, in the industry as well as by the government. And they are actually raw material for handicraft and mats. Uh, they were quite important in Indonesia. And the second one, the wild rattan, they are mainly uh, coming from uh, Sulawesi scattered all over the island, but mainly uh, produced from central Sulawesi. Uh, recently, southeastern Sulawesi even also start to uh, export, I mean, uh, ship their uh, big diameter stratan to other islands. And uh, so the, the rattan actually in, Sula in East Kalimantan, uh, they are mainly cultivated and then grows in the Sweden, uh, Sweden farming areas as well as secondary forests. They grow together with other plant uh, tree species uh, because rattan has to grow together climbings with the, with the, with, with the main tree species so, so because they are quite thorny and then they have the small leaves actually hanging on the, on the, the, plea, on the tree uh, plant species. And then uh, they're quite important to the livelihood of the local farmers, local people in uh, East Kalimantan. Uh, from our study in 99, rattan contributed like 30% of the household income at that time. And then rattan also has special role as the uh, saving bank account. So farmers or local producers, they harvest their rattan when they need the money to, for instance, sending uh, their children to the schools. Uh, they need money for wedding, they need money for other ceremonials. So rattan actually uh, playing that role. But uh, since 2005, when we had our study uh, in East Kalimantan, especially in West Kutai, we found that rattan start to be declining. The land that was planted by rattan then converted into the oil palm and rubber, as well as to the oil, uh, to the coal mining area, because uh, we found that farmers or raw material producers at that time was not interested anymore to harvest their rattan because of the price. Uh, in 2005, for instance, uh, per wet kilograms rattans in the village, the price is about only 1,000 rupees or only 10 cents US dollar at the time, compared to uh, rubber that the price is almost 10 times. And uh, it was not easy to harvest rattan. A farmer has to go to the forest. They have to cut the stems and then carry all over from the forest into the village, into the pool, into the uh, traders in the village, and then they have to carry, they have to walk at least four kilometers. So it's quite a hard job, and uh, not so many people interested to do, uh, to work on rattan. But we uh, cannot avoid the fact that rattan is quite important for the industry in Indonesia. Furniture industry, handicraft industry, and mats industry actually use rattan quite, uh, 
quite, quite importantly. And then in 2005, government of Indonesia issued uh, policies on the quota for the uh, export of uh, semi-finish and raw uh, rattans. And uh, the quota actually especially applied to the wild, uh, to the, to the Taman Segairi, to the Calamus caesius and Calamus tracheolus from Kalimantan. Uh, they only able to be exported in a certain amount. At the time was uh, 36,000 tons per year, while for the wild rattan from Sulawesi actually fully banned. The idea of the policy actually to give the opportunity to the national industry, uh, furniture industries in Indonesia to be able to absorb the raw materials instead of losing the raw materials exported to the other countries, especially our competing uh, furniture industry countries. But the implication to the, to the price uh, at the farmer's level was declining. So because uh, the price actually was mainly uh, controlled by the industry in Java. Uh, in Java, Dratan mainly produced uh, in Cirebon for the handicraft and furniture, as well as Gresik uh, and Surabaya is Java, and recently also in Jepara in central Java. And in 2011, uh, government even uh, start to be more strict with Dratan export. So government of Indonesia, especially uh, Minister of Trade, issued the policy of fully ban to all kind of Dratan to the uh, cultivated rattans, small diameters, as well as to the wild rattans. The idea actually to increase, uh, to be able to boost the, the industries, the rattan industry in Indonesia. But uh, was the policies actually uh, had been giving uh, benefit to all players in the, in the rattan industry in Indonesia. Uh, the fact in 2012, uh, the productions or the export of the uh, rattan furniture from Indonesia the finished product was slightly increased compared to 2011, but not necessarily reached the level that we had in 2008 or 2009. So the export in 2012 was about 150 uh, million uh, a year US dollars, but in 2008 or 2009, for instance, we even we even reached uh, 250 million uh, US dollar per year. So. Uh, the idea of giving the, uh, the opportunity to the industry is, uh, is, is really a genuine, I mean, it's a quite novel idea, but then government need to think about the, uh, the supporting policies that will benefit the local farmers because uh, at one hand, government support the industry, but on the other hand, the uh, price at the, at the farmer level uh, in the upstreams in Kalimantan or Sulawesi was not really getting better. So it's not uh, necessarily correlate with the, positively correlate with the price and the livelihood or uh, welfare of the farmers in Sulawesi or uh, East Kalimantan. So uh, the recommendations from our research actually, one, uh, Indonesia, government of Indonesia doesn't have any blueprint of the, uh, of the rattan industry in Indonesia. So uh, this, uh, the absence of the blueprint or the roadmap actually has been uh, uh, giving negative impact or affecting the, the raw material producers in, in Sulawesi and Kalimantan. And then if the farmers start to convert their rattan gardens into other uh, products, which is uh, logically uh, more benefit to, to them, uh, it will give a, a threat to the rattan, to the scarcity of the rattan itself. Maybe rattan will be extinct in the, nice, in the next uh, five or 10 years. And uh, rattan, change, rattan export policy had keep changing over time since 1980s into 2011, the most recent policies. Uh, export ban has been open and closed and partially open and partially closed, but never been followed with the serious uh, policy that support the, the rattan industry as well as the rattan uh, production for, from the Rome, uh, Rome Trail, uh, from in Kalimantan and Sulawesi. Government of Indonesia until now doesn't have really a clear data, reliable data on the potentials of rattan production in Indonesia. And this has been to be uh, improved. And then the government support, the absence of the government support at the raw material production areas actually has been uh, affecting to the local farmers uh, for not being, uh, feeling not being uh, valued by the government because they need really attentions, you know, from the government to be able to improve the, the rattan production in the in Sulawesi or Kalimantan. So uh, I would like to conclude that the government in Indonesia uh, need to think uh, further about to 
take the serious policies on the, in the rattan uh, industry in Indonesia, uh, either closing the export ban or opening the export ban, both need to be supported with the policies that will give benefits to uh, players along all the value chains of the rattan industry in Indonesia. And then uh, the policy has to be, uh, the policy has, has to be covered by the intersectorals, by the Ministry of Trade, Ministry of uh, Environment and Forestry, as well as the Ministry of Industry, so that uh, the rattan industry and the rattan uh, productions will be covered uh, uh, by all, uh, all, uh, all players. I mean, the, the policies will be benefiting the all players along the value chains. I think that's all that I would like to uh, present this morning. Great. Well, thank you very, very much. Um, I would like to open the floor to some questions. We have um, a good 15, 20 minutes for questions. So are there any questions? If not, let me jump in with my question. Because um, I mentioned in the introduction that C4, for instance, had been involved along with other institutions, uh, scientific institutions mm -hmm. and others, in Indonesia in giving some advice, as I remember, to the government about the export ban yes, and about yes. what would be good policy. Yes. And something didn't seem to have gone right. Could yes. you, you, you mentioned that um, the, the government has to pay attention, yes. but um, could you tell us a bit more about the story of that export ban and the cartels yes. that control yeah. Rutan? And were we just, uh, was C4 and a, a lot of other institutions just sort of naive and not mm. understanding really how the market operated? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Christine. It's really interesting questions. Uh, back to 2005, uh, C4 was invited by the Ministry of Trade uh, to give advice or to give inputs on the policies of uh, export ban of uh, raw material, raw uh, rattan export. And uh, actually, the government of Indonesia at the time, Ministry of Trade, uh, were wondering how much actually the potential productions in Indonesia and how much the industry can absorb from the raw material productions. And then we found that actually we had a quite a significant amount of uh, productions and potentials of raw materials in Indonesia that will not be able only absorbed by the uh, domestic industries. So uh, at that time, that's why the government uh, applied quota for the raw material export, which is, uh, it was 36,000 uh, tons per year because that's actually the number that we can tolerate to be exported uh, for the raw material and semi-finished products uh, outside Indonesia, while the industry will absorb uh, the, the rest of the production of the raw materials. But then, the one, uh, one policy of export ban is not enough, because uh, we also need the policy from Ministry of uh, Industry. Ministry of Industry need to be able to support also the industry of Indonesia so that they can compete with the industry abroad. So uh, feeding the industry in Indonesia not necessarily means uh, will give benefit to the industries to be able to compete with the, uh, with the industry from China or, 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 or Philippines at the time or Vietnam. So uh, government of Indonesia at the time only act partial. So the policy is only covered by Ministry of Trade. On the other hand, also Ministry of uh, Forestry at the time will also need to think about uh, what sort of policy that will benefit the uh, rat, wild rattan harvesters for in Sulawesi, for instance, so that they can harvest rattan uh, uh, in Sulawesi and then sell the uh, price, uh, sell the rattan with the reasonable price. And uh, well, even recently, government of Indonesia in 2011 applied the full export ban. That policy was not supported with the uh, other policies from Ministry of Forestry and Ministry of uh, Industry, so that. Uh, they just closing the crane of the export of the raw materials and uh, semi-finished, but not necessarily supporting the industry and the uh, raw material producers. Yeah. Can I just add? Yeah. And what about this presumed cartel of of buyers and exporters? Yes. Is that real or is yes. that just imagined? <laughs> yeah, we found we found actually we interviewed in our research in 2011. We interviewed one of the big traders that we can also cartel, and they admit actually they applied cartel. Uh, for them, it's quite reasonable because uh, rattan is not so profitable compared to other products. Uh, business in rattan is not as profitable business with uh, doing business with rubber or oil palm. So, uh, for instance, uh, uh, traders in, in, in Samarinda at the time we found, 
if they have uh, money about 100 million uh, rupees, you know, they will spend that money doing business with rubbers so that they can uh, gain a profit 40%. But doing business with Ratan, they only gain profit like 10%. So in order to be able to get a higher profit, so they do the cartel, they do the fixed pricing so that, uh, you know, to be able to gain uh, more margin to the, to, the, to the investor or the capital holders. Okay. okay, thank you. And any other question? Very interesting talk, thank yeah. you. Um, I'm just wondering, I missed the beginning. Mm -hmm. Do you have any idea of the sort of gross market in absolute terms and what it is now and what the potential is? Or? Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you, John. Yeah, so uh, at the moment, Indonesia uh, export 200 uh, million uh, US dollars uh, of rattan, finished uh, rattan furnitures. But we also need to remember that that amount actually, that, uh, that figure is not only covering the uh, natural rattan, as well as covering 10% to 15% at least covering the synthetic rattan. So uh, there is a trend also in, uh, in Europe uh, where the rattan furniture is being exported, that people start to, the market start to be interested with the uh, plastic rattan. And uh, this is because related to the, there are some uh, disadvantage of having the natural rattan, like uh, they are anti-mold, of course, with the plastic rattan. They uh, can uh, persist any kind of uh, weather, any kind of climates. But uh, the fact, the total market, I mean, has been declining recently. So uh, in 2008, 2009, we export about uh, 300 million US dollars to 250 million US dollars, but now the value actually is below 200. That even includes the plastic rattan. Uh, Indonesia's market in total, uh, based on the data of Ministry of Trade, the total furnitures, including wooden and rattan and bamboo furnitures, is about, the potential is about 20 billion, uh, 20 trillion uh, rupees in a year. So it's quite a big amount of uh, money and then that's why the furniture producers in Japara they used to produce uh, wooden furniture now they start to diversify also producing the rattan furniture combined with the wooden, wooden furniture yeah. any, any other questions and may I may I remind you John didn't do it but you have to stand up when you ask a question for the for the people who are recording um, what about producers associations? Um, do they play a role in negotiating with the government? Yes, so? uh, thank you, Bimbika. It's, uh, actually, this question was addressed uh, 10 to 15 years ago, whether producers association will help the farmers or rattan producers to be able to negotiate with the big industries, especially to the large players. Number of uh, rattan producers in between 2004, 2005 was initiated by the local farmers. In East Kalimantan, they have their own, they call as uh, uh, Petiga Air, the producers, uh, Rattan Producers and Farmers Association. In Central Kalimantan, they have the Pedua Erka. Uh, and then in uh, Sulawesi, they have APRI. There are numbers of producers. And then at the end, uh, as uh, Christine mentioned, that there are cartels also, you know, about uh, in these industries. So the small players is not, uh, it's not as easy to play. It's not as easy uh, to play in others' uh, business because money, actually, the capital is the is the main key here. Because uh, in order to be able to uh, to fight against this cartel, you need the capitals, you need the financial capital. While the furniture producers association, the small scales especially, they have quite limited uh, players. In Indonesia now, we have uh, two uh, big players uh, association. First is Asmindo. And second one is uh, AMCRI. Asmindo is Indonesia Furniture Association. Uh, AMCRI is an Indonesia Wooden and Rattan Furniture Association. So th these two big uh, industries association, actually, they are really big players. Uh, they also consisted with the uh, large industries. So they, so they actually play quite, uh, quite, they have quite significant roles uh, in, the, in the industry in Indonesia, as well as they, in, the, in the politics. Thank you. Uh, I just wonder, do you look at also uh, informal market? Uh, because I remember in 2000, 
2008, around 2007, I, I was helping with a, a project with uh, David mm -hmm. and looking at non-timber forest product. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, one of our fun, uh, finding was uh, it's very interesting. There's an, there was an increase in the amounts of uh, raw material, rotans, that mm -hmm. come from central Kalimantan mm -hmm. to west Kalimantan and was imported illegally to uh, exported illegally to Malaysia mm. and a lot really yeah. a lot so yeah. I just wonder so like do you also look at this uh, aspect of your study? yes yes uh, uh, actually in 2011 2012 we have the figures of the illegal uh, export uh, from Indonesia to uh, Malaysia and Singapore through uh, Malacca Strait and uh, in 2000 uh, the data the research from University of Riau in 2012 reported that they found at least hundreds, uh, hundred plus containers, you know, being smuggled to to Malaysia. So this actually is implication of the full ban, full uh, full export ban of the of the raw materials. So the farmers try, the players at the local level, uh, try to find ways actually to be able to sell their products to to be to the abroad instead of selling the products in. In, in Indonesia because of the price uh, differentiations. That's why, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we really need uh, uh, policies that will support the industry so that industry will be stronger and able to, to get, uh, to, to compete with the, with the global players in order to buy the raw materials in Indonesia. Yeah. We have time for about for one or two more questions. Any other? Well, let me jump in again. <laughs> um, is this so? I, I in introducing you, I, I mentioned the fact that C4 has been working on rattan for mm -hmm. a very, very long time, um, and so now it's the decline of importance. Is this going to be the last one? What do you predict um, for rattan in Indonesia or rattan in Southeast Asia, and what do you recommend as far as C4's involvement in continuing research? Yeah. Uh, th this is not the end because the government of Indonesia, uh, until last year, last uh, in November and December 2014, uh, Ministry of Forestry uh, uh, were still interested actually to look at the rattan and then want to have the a more prospective uh, rattan industries in Indonesia. And then this uh, concern has been alert to the to the government because they also want to know what will be the implications of the current policies, especially with the new government now, they want to uh, review actually the existing policy that not benefiting the, 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 the Indonesian economy as well as not benefiting the small scale producers. So uh, me, myself, I've been invited to the number of discussions with the government as well as with the other stakeholders with the NGOs, with the private sectors as well, to talk about the potentials. What will be the what will be the the futures of the uh, rattan furnitures and rattan handicraft in Indonesia? So, uh, well, I'm quite optimistic that uh, government of Indonesia will refuse, will review and then revise the existing policies and then uh, to be more comprehensive in uh, applying policies to be able to support the rattan uh, furniture industry in Indonesia. Okay. John? Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> One more. Yeah. Sorry, is this working? Um, we've been talking a lot about lately about outcomes. This is fantastic mm. work. Mm. Did you record any outcomes of our research results on this? Any change in policies? Have they, are they doing anything differently? I'm sure they are, but have we recorded it of, as a result of our work here yeah. and your discussions with policymakers? Yes. Uh, in 2005, we actually involved with the Ministry of Trade and then we recorded and then it was also assessed. Uh, I remember C4 had the EPMR at the time, uh, assessment of the C4 impact to the policies. Uh, it was evaluated at that time and then also now, we also, uh, I also record the, the discussions, meetings and then, uh, 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 you know, exchanging ideas and then share the findings between C4 and other organizations. Uh, C4 at the moment doesn't have any uh, projects, uh, research projects related to the rattan, but we have been collecting data, we have been doing research, we've been publishing the, the articles, books, occasional papers related to rattans, and then this has been used and referred by the government also uh, as the basis uh, discussion to move forward. But what is, uh, what is very important actually, we realize uh, that this cannot be solved only by one ministry. So it's supposed to be intersectoral. 
So uh, last year, government of Indonesia uh, initiate what they call a Ratan, uh, National Ratan Forum, consisted of the presentation of Ministry of uh, Forestry, Ministry of Trade, Ministry of Industry, stakeholders, as well as research institutes like C4. And now uh, the discussion still going. Uh, it has been quite a while that we haven't met, but uh, I'm quite optimistic that the government of Indonesia will actually uh, looking at it quite serious. And because, uh, well, there are two big associations, Asmindo and Amkri, who are also at the moment fighting, you know, promoting the, the, the importance of the Ratan uh, Furniture Industries. Yeah. Great. Well. Let me get on my mark here again, <laughs> and just to thank you again. Um, I think it, we, you know, we're we're very happy that you're you've moved into areas of impact assessment because mm -hmm. there's so much to be done in that area. But um, I think, as this this um, talk also illustrated, um, uh, the, Danny also has contributed so much of field research of important analysis and all, and areas that have been very, very important for C4 for a very long time. So we thank you especially, not only for this talk, but for all that work over the years in livelihoods and in other parts of C4. Thank Thanks you, Christine.